Now, as I mentioned, we have two different Max for Live LFO devices. One of them is an audio device, and one of them is a MIDI device. The difference is slight, but it could be significant depending on what you want to do. Now, I happen to have another MIDI track, track four, with a different instrument here. I haven't really done anything to this patch yet. It's just a basic sine wave, but what I'd like to do is use the LFO MIDI device uh, so I can take advantage of some expression controls. If you've never heard this term before, it generally refers to things such as velocity, uh, aftertouch, channel pressure, using the mod wheel and the pitch bend wheel on a keyboard. Uh, by using this information, we can make the LFO go faster, go slower, things like that. So let's go into our Max for Live devices. And again, I'm looking for the LFO MIDI device. So I'll expand this and I will scroll down here. Now I happen to have some legacy devices from Live 9. This LFO MIDI device, this is also part of the Max for Live Essentials bundle. Uh, but this interface has not been updated like the LFO Audio one, at least not the version that I have. But functionally, it's pretty much identical except for one major difference. We see that we have a cyclical waveform here, just like we had before. We can change the waveform down here, uh, and we can adjust whether or not this is going to play in sync with the tempo, and we have a map button. All these things are very similar to the LFO audio device. The biggest difference is if I click here, this little triangle, this expands uh, the area where we can see different expression controls. And as I mentioned before, these things have to do with how you play uh, a MIDI controller, play a MIDI instrument. You could also adjust these things in a clip envelope if you choose to. So we have key tracking. This generally means uh, the higher the note that you play, the higher the value that is sent to modulate the LFO, to make it operate more quickly, uh, or to increase the depth. We also have velocity here. So depending on how hard or soft we strike the notes, we can make the LFO range uh, wider or more narrow by adjusting the depth, or again, play with the rate. The mod wheel and aftertouch. Aftertouch, if you're not familiar with this, uh, some MIDI controllers allow you to basically hold a note and then press further, applying more pressure. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as channel pressure. Sometimes it's referred to as aftertouch. If you have a MIDI controller that has this capability, you can use that to adjust the LFO as well. So what I'd like to do first is I want to map this to something that's going to be obvious for us to hear. So again, our default sound is just that. A very easy way to uh, make this sound different since I'm using the operator instrument, this uses a different form of synthesis, uh, and I can easily change this sound dramatically by just modulating this operator here. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. FM synthesis is great, and we have many courses to discuss that as well. So we can hear the change that'll happen there. I'm actually gonna make this an octave lower. So we can get something like that to happen. Again, I don't want to do this manually. I want the LFO to modulate the level of this particular operator. All I have to do now is hit the map button and then click on any parameter that I want this to modulate. Okay, that's moving very quickly, a little bit too quickly for me. I think I'd like to slow this down. Uh, I'd also like this to operate in sync with my tempo. So I'm going to hit the frequency button. Now it says sync. One big difference with the LFO MIDI device compared to the audio device, if you have the rate synced to your tempo, it's not actually going to generate any sort of clock signal unless Ableton Live is running. All right, so I just started the transport. Now we can see the LFO is actually being generated. If I stop Ableton Live from playing, no LFO. So keep that in mind if you use the LFO MIDI device. There we go. Okay. Again, it's a bit extreme. It's not very pleasing to my ear. The range is too much. It's moving a bit too quickly. But what I'd like to do is uh, be able to change how this operates based on how I play the instrument. That's the whole purpose of using the LFO MIDI device. So let's just reduce the depth here a bit for now. And maybe what I can do is make it so that depending on how hard or soft I strike the notes, the depth increases. So we can start with a, a smaller amount of depth a more narrow range, it's a bit more subtle. And then if I hit the notes harder, maybe the depth will increase. If that's what I want to do, then I can use the velocity uh, parameter over here. And as I strike the notes with a higher or harder velocity, the depth will increase, all right? So I'm gonna play a note. Okay, I just softly tap the note. Now I'm gonna strike it much harder. And you can see, that's a pretty subtle difference. Let's increase this a lot. 
So there you can see. All right. So that's one example that we could use. Uh, another example, let's say if I want to use the mod wheel. Many, many keyboards have a mod wheel controller, and this can be freely used to uh, modulate something else. Since we already have velocity affecting the depth, let's use the mod wheel to affect the rate. All right. I'll make it so that this can operate much more quickly. All right, so now I hold a note, adjust my mod wheel. So if you want to utilize an LFO device that's much more expressive, that responds to the way that you play a MIDI controller, the LFO MIDI device is a great tool to use.